Hello and welcome to Every Persona Explained, where we take a look at the origin and representation of every persona. And today we're taking a look at Undyne. Going into this, I thought I had a decent grasp on the character. Female water spirit, possibly Germanic, maybe has a specific river or something she lives in. Boy was I wrong. Undyne were first mentioned in the 16th century treatise, a book on nymphs, sylphs, pygmies, and salamanders, and on the other spirits, by Paracelsus. Wait, who's that? Paracelsus was a Swiss-German doctor, alchemist, and philosopher who had a big influence on Renaissance medicine. He was also known by his full, way too long of a name, Philippus Aureolus Theophrastus Bombastus von Hohenheim. And if you think that name sounds familiar, yeah, this is where it comes from. As interesting as he is, this video isn't about him, so let's move on. In his book, he claims that the four traditional elements, water, fire, earth, and air, each have their own people living in them. The water wands are the Undyne, in that they're like humans, but they're not humans. They eat food, wear clothes, get cut off in traffic, and briefly contemplate vehicular homicide. You know, human things. Where they differ from humans, though, is that they lack a soul. Fortunately, there is a way for them to acquire one. They just have to marry a human and bear them children. What the fu- If, like me, you were curious about the men of these species, Paracelsus helpfully explains that there are many, many more females than males. So the whole, there's another world full of women and not many men, and they need dick to survive, isn't a new concept, and that men have been being men since forever. He also provides some important information to any man who ends up married to an Indine. Namely, don't cheat on them. Now you might think don't cheat is kind of a given, but Undyne don't mess around. If you cheat on them, they will murder you to death. Also, if your wife disappears into the water one day, you can't get remarried to someone else, because if she's an Undyne, she's not dead, and you're still married to her, and she will still kill you, despite the fact that she's the one that left. Yandere, got it. He also brings up Melusine, a half-human, half-fairy, who's also a water spirit, don't know how that works, who was cursed to become a half-serpent every Saturday. It, it's a weird story. Paracelsus claimed that Melusine was actually an Undyne, and not a half-human, half-fairy, snake-tailed water serpent, but that she was also involved in witchcraft and in league with the devil. So, yeah... Anyways, the Undyne was used by many later artists, including musicians, poets, and writers. Most blatantly by... this guy, in his novella Undyne. And less blatantly, but more famously, in Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid. This, I think, leaves Undyne in an interesting position. Usually Persona fit into one of four categories. They're from a religion, from folklore, from history, or from literature. Paracelsus wrote this treatise as a way to explain how the Undyne, and the other spirits, fit into Christian theology. But from what I can tell, there's no denomination that accepts this as canon. So does that make them a literary character? Or does the fact that it was written in a religious context mean that they're religious characters? I don't know the answer, but it is fun to think about. And that's Undyne, the soulless water spirit that wants your dick. So let's take a look at her in-game representation. This, this is really good. Although a little basic, it matches the description we have of, like a human, but water. It's of course a female, because why wouldn't it be? And it has waves of water around it. Not sure about the elf ears, though. Also, I know it shows up in Innocent Sin and Eternal Punishment. But it's an attack in those games and not a persona, so we're just going to talk about the P4 version. Undyne is in the Lover's Arcana, which upright represents love, obviously, harmony, and relationships. Considering the Undyne need love, or at least marriage, to get a soul, this fits super well. Reversed, it represents disharmony, imbalance, and bad choices. Like the bad choice of cheating on your undying wife and getting murdered in retribution. Her moveset is pretty spot on too. 
While she lacks water moves, because water isn't an element in P4, she does have ice moves like Bufala and Mabufala. And that's as close as we can get. She also gets healing moves, both health healing and poison healing, but I think that's less a reference to Undyne and more of the association of water with healing. Overall, this is really good representation. Gold Star. Thank you very much for watching. This video was a lot of fun to research. I had never read a treatise before, but I'm definitely looking forward to reading more if they're even half as unhinged as this one was. So don't forget to subscribe, uh, leave me a comment on who you want to see next, and uh, I'll see you next time on Every Persona Explained.